All right, guys, so this video is about the uh, cumulative probability. Uh, this was sent in by one of the, uh, from one of the viewers per se, from the, from the comment section, uh, Rhea. Uh, so thank you for sending that in. Uh, it's, a, it's a good question. I think it came up and I appreciate you sending those in because I think it helps everybody when we can see those questions that we don't really cover uh, kind of classically throughout the basic stuff. So make sure you keep sending those. It really helps and uh, I enjoy doing it. And watch this video up until the end. Actually, you guys will have a homework assignment that will actually impact one of the upcoming videos and the questions that we have with that. So watch it. Watch all the way to the end. And again, it'll be like a tip to watch some other video that it's really important. So hope you like it. All right, guys. So this is going to be about the cumulative uh, probability and how I want you to, to understand this. And in case you see that word on the test, it came up in a question. Um, is I want you to think of that as combined uh, probability. Same thing. And to, un to, really, to really understand the concept, you got to think of it like a, a dice, okay? And how you're going to do this is to think, if I was to r roll a dice and I said, well, what's the chance of you getting a two? You'd say, oh, that's one out of six. Okay. And if I said, what's the chance of you rolling the dice again and getting a two? You'd say, oh, that's still one out of six. Right, because each time it's it doesn't matter what you did the first time, because when you roll it again, you start back at scratch. So, and then if, and so on. If I said, okay, if you're going to roll a two three times in a row, what's the probability of you doing that? And be one six times one six times one six, and you, and you multiply that. Okay, you multiply across, and that would give you the uh, probability uh, of rolling of rolling three twos uh, in a row. So that's the cumulative probability of doing something. So they started using these like when they start doing drug research, uh, perhaps even drug ads, but they'll talk about the cumulative probability of, of lasting or of, of survival after so much, so much time. So here's the question. It says, a study of breast cancer patients who use drug RIYA8 is reviewed and the data is presented in the table below. And you can see the data here, it says time in years, okay, one year, one to two, three to four, five years. The number of patients at the beginning of that time period, so they started out with 250 patients, and you can see how each year it went down some. The number of patients who passed away during that time, so in the first year, at the end of the first year, uh, 50 people died, uh, and then 15, 15, 10, and so on. And then this last column is the percentage of patients who the percentage of patients who passed away during that time frame. So, after the in the first year, there's you know 20% of the people passed away. Uh, in the year one through two, 7.5%, and so on. Okay. So it says based on this data, what is the probability that a patient who uses the drug will be alive? Okay, will be alive at the end of four years. Now. This right here says the, the percentage of people who passed away. I want the people who uh, would be alive at the end of four years. So I gotta get all the way to here. I gotta go from zero all the way to four, and I gotta figure out. Now, it'd be nice if they said, you know, someone did all the calculations for us, but they don't. Now here in, on this question, they give each individual year. Now, I just have to get to, to year four, because that's what they're asking. But the kicker to this one is, they give me this, the percentage of people who passed, I need the people who are alive. Because think about this, if I was gonna say, what's the chance of someone passing away? If I asked you right now, what's the percent, percent chance of someone passing away using this drug at the end of one year? You go, oh, that's easy, that's 20%. And if I said, what happened at the, at the end of two years? Well, you could say at between year one and two, 7.5% people passed, but I, you'd have to, do the combined, you know, if someone lasts two years on that drug, you'd have to say, oh, well, the chance of them passing away would be, you know, this times this. Now, there's one disclaimer, and I'll say this, in math, I don't like percents, I like decimals. So you gotta convert all this stuff to decimals. And on your step exam, make sure everything's a decimal. So, <clears throat> again, if I was to, if I went back to that whole dice thing, if I said, again, if I'm to roll a two, one out of six, one out of six. So in year one, if someone's going to pass away, what's the chance? 0.2. And then in year two, how, what's the chance of them passing away? 0.075, okay. But, so, so you can see that you just got to multiply the probability of each year up, and then that'll give you the, the sum total of, 
of whatever length of time you're looking for. So to answer this question, it says, based on this data, what is the probability that a patient who uses the drug will be alive? So I just got to convert this. So this isn't 20% um, that because that's who passed. The percent who's alive is 80% or 0.8. This is the percent who are who passed. I need the percent who are alive, and so that's going to give me so 0.08. That's going to be 93, right? Uh, well, 93 percent, or 0.9 or, or 0 0.093, right? I'm sorry, 0.93. And then this one is the per percent who passed. So that means the percent who are alive is 91 percent. You see what they did? 80 percent in years 0 through 1, 80 percent are living. Years 1 through 2, it's 90, 93 percent are living. In years 3 to 4, 91 percent are living. So we have to multiply these up. And again, we don't like percents, we like decimals. So I would have 0 0.8 times 0.93 times 0.91. And if you multiply all that up, that would give you your probability that a patient who uses this drug will be alive at the end of four years. You just have to multiply it up. It's just like the dice. You gotta multiply, multiply, multiply. And each event is independent of the other, okay? Now again, it would have been nice if they would just gave us the, the probability themselves, but again, this is the, the step exams. They're gonna make you interpret the chart you have to know your take home point of this thing is that when we say cumulative probability, just start thinking you're gonna to have to multiply each independent event. They've gotta give you something. It'd be nice if they gave you the roll of the dice, right? You'd nail that in a heartbeat. But it's probably gonna be in a chart. Be careful that if they say alive down here and it says passed away up here, you gotta convert it. You just gotta take the, uh, the opposite of 100% and then subtract these and then you, you, you'll have it, okay? If I would have said passed away at the end of four years, then you'd just, you, again, you would have just went 0.2 times 0 0.075 times 0 0.029 and it would have probably been, uh, well, it would have been this guy, but it would have been the decimals, okay? Now, what I want you to do uh, to, to, as an extra one for this, there's two things. It's kind of a homework assignment for you. I want you to understand clinical trials, number one. You, there's four phases, right? So there's phase one. That basically says, is it safe? You know, are we gonna do this? So it's a very limited amount of people. They give them the drug, make sure no one is gonna die all of a sudden on them. So phase one basically answers the question, is it safe? Phase two, does it work, all right? We know people can tolerate it, but does it actually work? Phase three says, does it work better? Okay, does it work better? And then phase four, you just gotta memorize this. This is the post market, uh, they say surveillance, right? They put it out there and then they get feedback from it. So phase one, is it safe? Phase two, does it work? Phase three, does it work better? And then of course, phase four, post market. Now here's your homework. I want you to look up this person on YouTube and it's called Easy Ways to Remember DNA Viruses, okay? You're gonna watch this video, you're gonna have it memorized, and at some point I'm gonna make some questions about this. Now this isn't really the biostats, but this is important for the step exams. The YouTube person, I don't know this person, but they're called 100 Lyric, and you'll see a picture, and it's called The Boy with the Hat. And hopefully you guys are familiar with this because it's a great, easy way to memorize the DNA viruses, okay? It'll help you, and it's a very, it's a very simple way. It's very effective. I don't want to take credit by no means for what this person, the work that they put in on this, but what we'll do is we'll create some questions coming up for this. So. The take home point of this video, cumulative probability, make sure you multiply when you see it. Just make sure they don't trick you. And then understand the phase trials and then make sure you look at this guy, look at that video, and then we'll do some questions later. Hope this was helpful.